Okay, here we are, Clark Auction, standing outside on this absolutely stunningly beautiful November day, getting ready to preview our sale coming up on Sunday, November the 8th. Here we're going to start off with this beautiful Jaguar XJ6. Came from an estate in Rowayton, Connecticut. From the state we, estate, we have a huge collection of rugs. We have a large collection of Chinese items, bronzes and everything, which you'll see inside. Anyway, this car has 80,000 miles. It's in mint condition. I drove it last night. Everything works fine. The upholstery seems great. It has an auction estimate of just three to 5,000, so beyond this one. Anyway, without further ado, we're gonna move in here to the main interior. We are, as I said, loaded. Uh, just here we have, this is actually from a Bronxville state. Absolutely beautiful 18th century rosewood inlaid and banded three drawer commode. And on top of this, look at the size of this bronze. Really, really beautiful bronze by Puerto Rican artist called Angel Botello. It's called La Coiffure, the, the hair, I believe. Look at the size of it. It's got to be about 39 inches in high. Anyway, that has an estimate, I believe, of 20 to 30,000. Here, also from our weight and estate, part of a lot of Chinese items that came into it is one of a pair of mother of pearl inlaid chairs with beautiful Chinese export porcelain inserts. That back insert on this one is as is, but on the other one it's in good shape. Here's the other one. Alongside of this in our used furniture section, we have one of a pair of very nice uh, parquetry and parquetry and marble top inlaid high end tables. Sitting on top of this, we have a really beautiful patinated bronze of a woman. It's by Emile Picolt. This is one of two bronze we have by this artist in the sale. Beautiful, beautiful quality, beautiful patina. And here we have the second bronze by the same artist, Emile Picolt. This one actually comes with its original green pedestal. This is from a Bronxville estate. While we're on the, on the uh, sculptural subject, why not have a look at this? This is one of my favorite items in the sale. This is one of the best quality marble sculptures I've ever seen. Just look at the bone work, the arms, the hands. This is a large marble sculpture by an artist called Ferdinando Adriani. One of the best I've ever seen. This one, I believe, has an auction estimate of four to 6,000. It also comes with its original pedestal. While we're in this lobby area, let's just focus on some of the Chinese furniture. This is 20th century, early 20th century, but absolutely magnificently carved desk. It's got dragons and mountains all the carvings you would want on it. That also came from Rowayton in Connecticut. But this one here, this came from a Long Island estate. It's a beautiful Chinese altar table with a nice marble insert. Nice hardwood table. Nice and decorative. And atop this you'll see an enamel porcelain charger. One of quite a few enamel porcelains we have in the sale. We've got plaques and we've got... This one has some good age. Famille Jaune, I believe. Let me put it down there without breaking it. Below this, we have another very large bronze. This is by an artist called Croissy. Beautiful subject matter. This has an estimate of 1,000 to 15. And while you're down focusing on that, just notice the carpet that's below it. This is sort of, I would say, sort of Kazakh Harry's style carpet. This is one of many vintage carpets, sort of as is, that came from the Rowayton, Connecticut estate. So any of our carpet buyers should look online here we have this, look at this chair here. Magnificent, magnificent Chinese rosewood chair. I nearly fell through it. The weight of this is phenomenal. Look at you can see Foo Lions there. Okay, moving into the main room. I've been a bit slow in there, so we're gonna go through this fairly fasty, but a quick glance will show you that we are loaded. We have 400 lots. Over here in the smalls, we have Russian and Greek icons. We have Meisen porcelain. We have glass boxes. In this showcase, you can see some of the Chinese, there's two Chinese enamel porcelain plaques. Another one up here. We have a Sheraton tea caddy. We have a monkey band by Dresden and Meisen, a mixture. Here we have more Asian porcelain Satsuma. We have quite a few clocks in the sale, so on this bottom shelf, we have this absolutely stunningly beautiful Doré bronze columnar clock with an enamel face. This putty form clock here is actually signed on the movement, is signed Tiffany. 
And here we have a repeater clock. It's in its case, but it's actually a beautiful, I believe, Black Star and Frost, Doré bronze repeater clock with its original case. Okay, and without further ado, we're gonna move along here. We have lots of carpets on the ground. I'm gonna leave some time for other prays, so I'm not gonna to get too busy into everything. We have Kermans, we have Kazakhs, we have Saruks. In the used furniture, we have this absolutely beautiful uh, Carlton house desk. Look at the nice crotch mahogany on this. Probably circa 1920. Along the walls, we've got highly carved Asian etagères, Asian chairs. Here's quite a nice little Chinese altar table. All of this carved and Chinese stuff came from Rowaton, Connecticut, a large estate on the water up there. The family had it for years. Moving along, we've got Art Deco sofas. And here we have what they call a mountain man oak table. This has about six leaves. It's very interesting. I, I, in the 15 years in business, I've only ever seen this set once. We sold a complete set probably 12 years ago for about 40 or 50,000. Anyway, this table is estimated two to 3,000. But strangely enough, in the same sale, we have the whole set. We have, uh, not all original, but we have the Mountain Man table. We have this china cabinet. We have this absolutely magnificently carved sideboard. Must have been a load of carvers doing time in prison to put this amount of work into stuff. And you look at this absolutely beautiful Horner. Here's the Mountain Man table that goes with it. Unfortunately, some of the uh, carvings are missing along the trim. This table has a lot of leaves, looks like it's original patina. It has six of these chairs, look at all the carving on the chairs. So in the set you have a large china cabinet, two sideboards, table with leaves and six chairs. Before I move over there, it just shows you, I'm sort of confused because there are so many great items in the sale, so I'm going to have to come back here. This clock here came from Lower Manhattan, we believe it was in a uh, sort of a uh, stock market type restaurant down there. But look at this carved and gilded, carved and gilded uh, fruit and uh, dolphins up in the top, magnificent large. It is missing the movement though. Below it, another highly carved sideboard or vitrine. It's got curved glass. Look at the carving in this, absolutely magnificent. It's mahogany. I came from a local estate here. Brownwood is a bit out, but these are particularly nice and they have good age. Nice set of eight. Mahogany chairs came from Hyde Park Antiques in New York years ago. You know, anything that came from Bernie Carr was always really great, so that's a nice set to have. It came from the person who purchased it off many years ago. We have a pair of bomb uh, and inlaid, marketry inlaid, probably Italian commodes here. 20th century, but nice to have a pair. Above this, you see here we have one of two. These are Chinese carved wood. This is the finest carving you'll see. It's all beautifully dovetailed. The workmanship is absolutely magnificent. The type of wood, hopefully it's Wang Wali or one of those, but what a spectacular pair. This is one of two. We've got a pair of torsiers. Not only do we have lots of rugs and lots of Chinese, but I neglected to say we have a mound of chandeliers. This is one of them. Bronze with the birds and the beadwork over there in that rack from a distance. You can see over there in that rack over there, Steve, we have more chandeliers there. We must have 20 chandeliers in the cell, minimum. But they're all great quality, nice large. We have Art Deco ones, we have 50s ones, we have Murano ones. Look at this, anyone who watched our Instagrams and stuff, you'll see, give you an idea of, oh, they want to sprain the old leg before Saturday night. Anyway, we have these pair of absolutely great quality bronze and patinated horses. Very heavy, but very nicely done. Not too kitschy, they're very, very good workmanship. As you can see in the back room, even this back room is loaded. Lots of mid-century, the Keen and those and paintings, Whitney and those, and Nelia will get to you. Here we have a nice pair of decorative screens. Of note in this back room, we have a three-piece bamboo set. This is interesting because it's actually American because you have the the curly maple with the bamboo and the marble top. So we have an arm or we have this, we have the bed. Rare to see. Below here, hidden, we have a Louis Vuitton vintage trunk, a rare Louis. A Louis rare, as they would say. Nice early one. All signed inside, doesn't have the inserts, but look, Louis Vuitton inside. 
I get the feeling I'm beginning to drag on a bit because there's so much stuff. Look at this bronze and alabaster chandelier. Great quality, 19th century. Moroccan style chandelier. More chandeliers, so you're gonna have to run to keep up with me now, Steve, because we're on the home track and I'm getting out of here. We've got chinoiserie decorated clocks. Here we have what they call a uh, fretwork paduk. Anglo-Indian, highly carved. Look at the carving on this. We have the chair and the love seat. We have American cut crystal, we have Sevres porcelain, we have Meisen porcelain, we have a bevy of sterling, which Whitney's gonna have to try and get through. But last but not least, we have three tray lots of daguerreotypes, our old photographs. I can't even figure out how to open this case. Anyway, they're selling in tray lots, but they are great for Civil War soldiers and all sorts of stuff. So something that you must come up and view. And with that, and without further ado, I am going to hand you over to Neelia, who's going to do the art. And thank you. We'll see you on November the 8th at 12 p.m. Thank you, Ron. I'd like to start here with this wonderful oil on canvas by Louis David Villant. Villant was a New York muralist um, and did many important uh, mural projects throughout New York City, inclu including the Hermitage Hotel, so, uh, parts of the Rockefeller Estate. So here we have a work, it's an oil on canvas, probably from the 1920s or so, and it's a portrait of his sisters. And uh, you can see just beautifully, beautifully rendered. We have very soft features, wonderful light, wonderful still life here with the fruit. This work originally came out of the artist's estate in Washington, Connecticut. He was part of that group of artists as well as part of the New York Muralist Society. Uh, so it has a very nice resume worth checking out. This is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. The next piece I want to show you is also an American uh, painting. This is by William Troust Richards. Richard was Richards was associated with the Hudson River School as well as the American Pre-Raphaelites. Later in his life, he did a lot of marine scenes, was living in Newport, although this is actually Longship's Lighthouse in Cornwall. So it's actually a British painting by an American artist. Uh, again, wonderful light coming from the moon here and from the lighthouse, uh, just deckled along the, the rough seas. This work is estimated at $5,000 to $7,000. Just above, uh, moving to Italy, we have a painting by Antonio Bueno. Uh, and this work uh, is actually sort of an, it's done uh, with an impression. It is an oil on a panel or artist board. This is estimated 1,000 to 1,500, but we can sort of see a very modernist face here, an unusual work for Bueno. We've sold his softer kind of metaphysical paintings in the past for over $20,000. So here, this is being offered with 1,000 to $1,500 estimate. Here we have a work out of an Upper East Side Manhattan estate. This is by Donald Sultan, a contemporary American artist, and this is called Black Lemons and Black Eggs. This was done in August 1985, signed and dated up here. Uh, we also have a Bloom Hellman Gallery label on the back of the work. And Sultan was very much known for his still life paintings and drawings, uh, but they're very much not so much about the subject, but really about form, negative space, uh, balance of composition. And you can see that here. We have a very striking work. Um, and though we know what the subject matter is, it's not really about the lemons or the eggs. So this is a wonderful painting. We're happy to have it. This is offered at a $4,000 to $6,000 estimate. The next piece I'm going to show you uh, is another Italian modernist work. This was done, I believe, in 1959. This is by Gustavo Fopiani. This is one of two works by the artist. His works are very uh, kind of whimsical, figural, uh, really nice, always a very soft, light, balanced palette, uh, and, and always some sort of underlying tones here. This one is called Woman with Mask and Three Braids, of course, in an Italian title written on the back. This out of a local Larchmont estate offered at a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate, but several other interesting uh, Italian modernist paintings from the same estate that you should look in our catalog online for. Another piece I want to show you, this came in on a walk-in Wednesday. This is by Orville Bowman, again an American painter. He was from an affluent uh, Florida family, actually, lived in Palm Beach but was very much fascinated by the segregated life uh, that he saw in the South, eventually moved to Haiti and the Caribbean islands, uh, and became influenced by the Caribbean life there, and was actually adopted 
by the Caribbean people and painted them with a lot of empathy, but also uh, really captured their culture with, with a lot of color and vibrancy. So here, this is called Premier Class. Uh, like I said, this came out in a walk-in Wednesday, but out of a local storage unit. And this is offered with a $4,000 to $6,000 estimate. To my right is an oil on canvas by very well-known French artist Marcel Dief. Dief, of course, uh, celebrated for his very decorative paintings of sensual female nudes uh, and portraits. Here we have a work called Country Breakfast, a couple seated in a very bucolic outdoor setting. Uh, this was actually confirmed and authenticated by Claudine Dief, the artist's wife, and she's also featured as the model here. She was often a model in many of his paintings. This came out of a Westport, Connecticut estate and is estimated at $2,000 to $4,000. The next piece I want to show you is also an estate fresh work, and it certainly looks it. This is an oil on wood panel by Guillaume Charles, Le, uh, Guillaume Charles Brun. And here we have an Orientalist landscape, which is somewhat unusual for Brun. Um, he was a student of Francois Picot uh, and very much uh, started painting Orientalist scenes of Northern Africa, but often featured individual figures, the architecture, uh, much down, more down-to-earth street scenes. So here we have a more expansive view, uh, probably of Algeria but a really nice painting. Once this yellowed varnish is cleaned up, I think it's really going to pop. There's some colors that we're missing here. This was done in 1858 and is estimated at three to 5,000. The next work I wanna show you is from the same state as the Donald Sultan. So here we have another contemporary American piece of art. Uh, this is by Frank Faulkner. Faulkner was an American designer and painter, uh, and you can see it very much see design elements in this work. When this was actually featured in the estate, uh, it was against a mirrored wall and looked like part of the architecture, which was really neat. Uh, this is signed and dated on the back. I believe it was done in 1985. It's got a very patterned texture, but also somewhat resembles a globe or the earth. So I really love this work. I love the palette here. This is modestly estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Several years ago, we sold a work by the contemporary Indian artist Krishna Ara. It was a Bombay street scene. As a result, we had a woman uh, call us whose parents owned four works by the artist, which I have featured here. Uh, they're, they're wonderful works on paper. They were purchased in India in 1968 or 1969 uh, when the consigners' parents lived in the area. So here we have uh, one scene depicting two women cooking fish. This is a watercolor or gouache on paper. Brilliant colors, capturing daily life. Um, the one thing Ara really wanted to do as part of uh, the founder of the progressive artist group was to depict Indian culture from an Indian point of view rather than a British point of view, uh, which is often what the art in the 1950s and 60s in India featured. Here um, also we have a work, and this again a gouache on paper, this is a nude. And this was also a revolutionary idea for uh, contemporary Indian artists to once again feature female nudes in their work. Ara also did many botanical still lives. So here we have a floral still life also on paper. And last but not least, I'll show you quickly this one, a sketch. This is a charcoal on paper. And again, a very intricate village scene here. This one with a little bit of damage. All of these were stored, rolled, and really have not been viewed since the 1970s. All of very good provenance. Purchased most likely from the artist back in, in the late 1960s. Each offered with an estimate around 1,000 to 1,500, up to two to 3,000. I wanna show you two more works from the 1940s uh, done in the United States. This first one is by Haley Lever. Lever was an Australian-born artist, uh, but came to the US, I believe, uh, in 1911 or so, so very much an American painter. And this is called Yacht Building City Island, New York. So this was done in 1946. It, it is signed down here, but it's also inscribed on the back. And uh, Haley Lever was very much known for his kind of post-impressionist paintings, vivid, bright use of color, but al also strong line and form, which we can see throughout this painting. Love the subject matter here. This is offered at a $1,000 to $1,500 estimate. Next, we have a work by Robert Lambden. And Lambden was another muralist. I showed you one New York muralist. Um, here's another one, but he was uh, based in Connecticut. 
This painting here titled The Brass Industry it was done for the Bridgeport Brass Company. It might have been a study for a, for a mural. Um, in 1942, following the WPA, uh, the Brass Company did commission Lambden to create a large series of murals uh, throughout the factory. So here we have a, a nice industrial scene. There's a lot going on. Very illustrative painting. He was also an illustrator. A few little bits of damage. Uh, this was actually presented to uh, the one of the workers in the factory and we have the presentation plaque on the front of the work this is estimated at six hundred to nine hundred dollars we have nearly 100 pieces of art in this auction so please take a look at our catalog now here's Keen thank you thank you Nelia we have another great selection of mid-century for November and I'll start here with one of not two but three Eames chairs, 670, 671, lounge chair, and ottomans. Uh, all three of them are in rosewood cases in varying degrees of condition. This one is my favorite, although the leather is very good. It's obviously uh, been replaced at some point. This one seems to be relatively early with the slip-on pads and the slip-on feet to that ottoman. Case is very good condition. Leather is also good, but like I said, it probably been replaced at some point. Moving on to the next one, this rosewood is has, in my opinion, a slightly nicer grain, but it is a newer model, and you do see that there is some significant wear and cracking to the leather, although it is complete. Uh, this one, as you can see, the difference has the later screw-in feet that they'd come in now, but this one is a relatively vintage example. I'm moving to the main room. So this is a nice set that we have here, a nice complete set, John Capel. This one's retailed by not Glenn of California, but John Stewart with the John Stewart labels. I really like these pieces, very streamlined. This kind of fold over, pull, the beautifully fitted interior with the drawers, nice vanity mirror here, interior shelving. This is in almost perfect condition from a local Larchmont estate. Comes with a pair of end tables here. Very nice end tables matching. And a double dresser. This double dresser is very nice, very streamlined. Top has a little bit of wear, but overall a very nice patina on that wood in a very nice condition as well. Over here, you might have seen one of two of the Niels Moller sets that we have. This one is a rosewood, the other is walnut. This one has two leaves, laminate inset top with the rosewood frame. This one has eight chairs, including two armchairs. You can see the Clark NY design Instagram for the armchair photo, but these chairs are just beautiful, beautiful condition. Niels Moller. And one of my, actually my favorite piece in the sale, uh, and a gorgeous, gorgeous centerpiece of any design would be this Vladimir Kagan blue painted burl cabinet flanking glass front shelving drawers, Kagan silver felt drawer interior. I mean, this burl is just beautifully lacquered, great condition. The blue really sets it off the interior of this. Bar is just great. It has the custom wine rack, mirrored back and bottom, smoke glass shelf. This is just a great piece from Kagan from a local Long Island estate. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So what you're seeing now is one of 177 Gio Ponti from a Sorrento Hotel tiles. These tiles come in a variety of different designs. These here are the diamonds. We have boxes and boxes and boxes of these all in relatively or in very good condition. Got the circles, there's half moons, stripes. There's a few individual ones. This is a nice beautiful one, a star, leaf form, stripes. 177, like I said, you can see the exact count of which designs have how many on the website and in the catalog, but this is just a great, great piece of cultural and historical importance as well as from a design perspective, Geoponte styles are just desirable and very beautiful. So a couple pieces that just came in, just recently added to the catalog uh, are this are these sofas, including a George Nelson daybed, a nice vintage one with the zinc an aluminum base, nice spring interior, beautiful orange vintage upholstery, some sun bleaching, but that's probably going to be reupholstered anyway. 
Another sofa from the same estate, just nice mid-century design. And I did mention that we do have other Eames chairs. There's another Rosewood one. This one's obviously detached. Uh, as described in the condition report on the website and in the catalog. Leather has been replaced on the ottoman, but the frame is in really good condition. One screw hole here uh, can easily be filled and replaced to make it good vintage condition once again. I want to show you a few pieces of lighting that we have. Uh, we have an enormous selection of lighting in general in the sale, but these mid-century pieces really stand out in my opinion. This is a nice Murano small leaf, clear gray, leaf form chandelier, beautiful camer frame, Murano glass, and this one is definitely my favorite in the sale. Although it's not a highly spectacular piece, it has these beautiful, beautiful white glass petal shades that go over this large camer frame as well, and this is just a great shape. It has beautiful texture, great dimension. I feel like the light would just come through really nicely. Obviously the wiring hasn't been checked, but it's just a beautiful one in my opinion and something that I like personally. I'll finish off here with a few things that we have in terms of case pieces. This is a pretty unusual uh, gray, original gray and chrome Milo Bowman for John Stewart chest. Great condition, fitted drawers on the interior as well as each side. That along with this is a nice lucite, unusual form asymmetrical base, thin glass, and a nice brass bolt on the interior of these lucite to keep everything together. This is a great coffee table and works very well in this space as well as yours if you so wish. I will shoot you over to Whitney now. She'll show you all the jewelry and the silver for the sale and I hope to see you there November 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Keenan. Here's a preview of jewelry and silver for our November 8th auction. I'll begin here with an 18 karat yellow gold and ruby Tiffany & Company bracelet from a Manhattan estate. And moving on from to a piece from the same estate, this is a carved coral and gold pendant. Beautiful piece, great carvings. And here is a citrine and 14 karat yellow gold cocktail ring. Really a great size, it looks wonderful on. Really nice piece. And another 14 karat yellow gold piece in this auction is this large bangle. A nice width, kind of a graduated look here and some etched designs, really beautiful. And the first piece out of our Darien, Connecticut estate. A wonderful estate, the woman was a model in the 1950s and these are just some of her jewels. This is a 14 karat yellow gold pearl and sapphire demi perure of a brooch and a pair of earrings. Leaf form with wonderful pearl and sapphire design accents. A really nice lot estimated at 300 to 500. And this here is an interesting little barracle pendant. Made in the 1970s, it's a, a, a mini Davidoff puzzle pendant. Purchased in the 1970s, a really interesting, great piece in this auction. And here's a little pair of Victorian earrings, 14 karat yellow gold, nice piece in this auction, estimated conservatively at 250 to 350. And another Tiffany piece in this auction is an, a, an 18 karat white gold, Atlas bracelet with diamond accents out of our Manhattan estate. And here another fun cocktail ring, sapphire cabochons with diamond accents set in white gold, really nice. And here we have a rose gold bracelet, really nice piece here, buckle form class with diamond accents, really nice piece. I like the articulated, kind of a, a beautiful fish scale pattern to the, the finish on this bracelet. And one of our key items in this auction from the same Darien, Connecticut estate is this Tiffany & Company crown or tiara form brooch. Beautiful white, gold, and platinum, diamond accents, really wonderful. The woman who, who was the owner of this piece, she wore it in the 1950s or 60s and then again on her 98th birthday. This was her, her choice piece of jewelry for, to, for her celebration. And from the same woman's estate, this is a wonderful original box of this 18 karat yellow gold Jules Jurgensen pocket watch. It is a hunter case, really wonderful with these little pieces that go alongside it with the clock key. And here we have a gilt silver amethyst and pearl bracelet, really nice estimate at 300 to 500. And from the same Darien, Connecticut estate is this 14 karat yellow gold buckle form bracelet. Really nice, it does have some damage here but a wonderful antique piece with the tassels here, really nice. 
And another cocktail ring set in 18 karat yellow gold is this large amethyst. And here we have a five strand pearl bracelet with these bars of diamond accents. Really looks wonderful on. And here's a, a 14 karat white gold filigree and sapphire bracelet. A 14 karat yellow gold women's Piaget watch. Great weight to this, a great look, a wonderful piece in the sale. And here we have from the same Darien, Connecticut estate, a Howard & Company 14 karat open face pocket watch with the watch fob. And this is a Le Coultre ladies watch in 14 karat yellow gold in the original box, which I always like. A really interesting watch. It looks wonderful on. There are images on our website where you can see what it looks like on. And moving on to one of our, another key lot in this auction is this, it just came back from GIA with a full report. And it's a 3.04 round cut diamond, H in color and SI1 clarity, estimated at 15 to 25,000. And one of my absolute favorite lots in this auction is this grouping of micro mosaics. If you can just look at the detailing here on this pendant, it's really wonderfully done. This is done by the Vatican Workshop. There are a few pieces of tesserae missing, but this is just par for the course with the age on this piece. It is a locket, it opens up, and then you can put a picture or, or some little sentimental piece in here, and on the back it, it does say PAX for the kiss of peace. And it is accompanied in this grouping by this really wonderful pharaoh single earring, which I would think someone will turn into a pendant. It's really very, very beautifully well done. The craftsmanship is extraordinary. And then it's also accompanied by this small brooch. And that's from the Darien, Connecticut estate, estimated at 300 to 500. And here's another miscellaneous grouping of jewelry, a really nice antique grouping. All of these are 14 karat yellow gold, this nice watch fob. We have this beautiful pearl brooch, an amethyst, and this is a buckle but it's really so wonderfully crafted. This is not gold, but it's really just so wonderful. How it buckles, it just forms so perfectly together. The pearls in this form just really do capture what a flower looks like. And from the same Darien, Connecticut estate is this grouping of antique watches. This is a coaching watch. We have late 18th, early 19th century watches with the keys. And here is this beautiful Tahitian pearl single strand necklace with diamond accents that is accompanied by a full appraisal done on this. The pearls measure between 10 and 11 millimeters and this is estimated at 25 to 3500. And to finish up for the jewelry we have from our Darien, Connecticut estate this 14 karat yellow gold and tortoise shell hair clip. It is in a, a Tiffany and Company box. It's unmarked but I do believe it to be Tiffany. A really beautiful piece. Nice filigree work in great condition. And now starting our selection of silver, we have this wonderful Tiffany & Company serving tray with a nice silver gallery and marquetry inlay here. This is also from our Darien, Connecticut estate. She did have quite the collection of jewelry and silver. And moving on to here, this is a six piece Tiffany & Company tea set and a, a very large Mexican silver tea set here with the floral paneling on each of these pieces and it is accompanied by a silver plate tray. Here also from Darien, a beautiful, a really, really beautiful with this reticulated paneling here. This is a Tiffany & Company low bowl or bread basket. And out of Yonkers, this is a collection of serving pieces. Really the highlight of this set is this pastry server in the Olympia pattern. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And out of the bottom shelf here, this is a continental Italian silver pair of candelabra with the nice twist arms, beautiful detailing women's faces. There's ram's heads and it goes down to all of these north wind faces, nice seated figures here, a beautiful pair of candelabra, estimated at 800 to 1,000. We have this Tiffany & Company pitcher, nice floral design. There is some damage. It's, it's accompanied by this oversized vanity jar and the smaller etched floral vanity jar. From the same estate as, as these pieces are these two weighted trumpet vases, nice ruffle edge, and this cranberry glass candy dish. This footed piece here is Black Star and Frost from our same Darien, Connecticut estate. Nice feet to this piece, a wonderful antique 
piece of silver. And here we have a Gorham Etruscan pattern flatware set for 12. This large punch ladle Tiffany and Company in the chrysanthemum pattern. Beautiful quality. The gilding to the interior of the bowl is in excellent condition. And here we have this beautiful 800 silver multi-arm candelabra. It's a single beautiful swan design here. Really nice footed candle candelabra at 800 to 1000 dollars. And here's a large Showfield and Company Balto Rose flatware service. Heavy, heavy piece of sterling flatware. Beautiful design. Really nice. Came out of a Yonkers estate. And ending up ending our selection of silver is this really wonderful Chinese tea service. This is late 18th century. Dragon head finials. If you take a look at the detailing here, it's a dragon's body that goes up to two twisted feet and tail. I mean, it's just wonderfully, wonderfully crafted. All of these repose genre scenes. The feet on here, late 18th century, Canton. And it's accompanied by this, this small creamer or teapot and open vessel. I do believe that these were made later. But a, a beautiful set here, estimated at 3000 to 5000 And this is also out of our dairy in Connecticut estate. And that ends it for my selection of jewelry and silver for the November 8th auction. We hope to see you there.